Hello and welcome to the demonstration for Never Ending Ivy, a lovely collection from Two Red Robins. I'm Hannah and I'll be taking you through today's little workshop. So let's take a look at just some of the samples created by our wonderful design team featuring this lovely collection. And I wanted to start with this one because I think this is a lovely way of working with the Never Ending Ivy wreath, uh, creating this wonderful freestanding card using construction acetate in the backdrop just to keep its structure, but layering that ivy rather than just taking one of the rounds, layering it over each other, repeating that ivy pattern, uh, having the ability to obviously download and print your reflections, cut them out as many times as you'd like, and layering them over one another. Then, of course, adding in the little florals, the little butterflies, the little birds to tell your story, and then having this kind of stand to the front as well, where it's drawing the ivy down and grounding the whole card design is very, very pretty. We can then go further with this kind of concept, and rather than having it as a full wreath, we can snip into the ivy itself and create lovely arches. This kind of reminds me of a rainbow with all the wonderful colors there as well. It's so, so pretty. So taking that ivy wreath, cutting into it, creating this kind of half semicircle design, and again, embellishing it with the other dyes from the Never Ending Ivy collection, the little butterflies there and a the little bird off to one side too. Or you can go totally in an opposite direction here um, and take a look at the florals, for example, and how beautifully they work with other dye collections that we have. So here we have the florals, the birds and the butterflies from the Never Ending Ivy collection, mixed and matched with the nature's alphabet. And look how well sized those little flowers are to work as embellishments on your letters as well. I think that is a very, very sweet way of using them. Very, very handy as embellishment motifs as well, using that in our three dimensional frames. For our demonstration today, we will be working on an eight by eight card blank and we'll be using and making use of the apertures, um, the inner and outer, well, the inner dies within the wreath die itself. So in front of me, I've cut um, or made a eight by eight card blank uh, using my strong card base. And to the foreground, I have cut the aperture using the central die. Let me just grab it so I can show you how we did this. It's just off to one side, bear with. So within the Never Ending Ivy, you get the outer and the inner for both the larger and the smaller size um, wreaths. So we're just gonna grab the inner. We're gonna open up our card blank to run it through our machine. We're not gonna stick our mats and layers down. We're gonna position them just like so. They're trimmed down, they're gonna fit beautifully once the card has all been made. And we're gonna stick them in place using repositional tape. So we're gonna hold this all together with repositional tape. We're then gonna take our aperture die and run it through our die cutting machine, cutting all of the layers in one go, but being sure to open the card itself. So when it runs through the machine, you're not cutting into the back of the card, you're just simply cutting into the front. That way, all your layers are aligned, your matte layers and your aperture layers are all aligned as with your card base, so you can cut through all three. If it doesn't quite cut through all the layers, you're gonna have at least an impression of where the die lines up. So you just simply um, remove which layer the layer hasn't cut, stick your die back over the top, run it through your machine with your card blank open again, and then you can create a cut all the way through your layers nice and easily. To the inside of the card, what we're gonna do first is stick those same uh, card stock. So we've got the green from the uh, Craftmaster Apple Pie card stock. Again, I just looked to the reflection colors for the Never Ending Ivy, and then just color matched it with one of the card stocks from our Craftmaster range. And that seems to be a really good way of creating a nice cohesive design. On the reverse, we have figure lift tape, and this is all just gonna sit in the inside of the card because we're creating an aperture. It's nice to have something where the inside of the card is designed as well. So just lining that up, those little tabs folded over the side allow me to go in and align without having to commit to that stick first off. Once we're happy, we can then pull those tabs and smooth that into place like so. The pattern paper that I'm using on top here is one of the papers from one of the magazine issues, the two Red Robin magazines as well. So to the front, we as I say, we have cut those apertures all at the same time to match. A little tip here, if you find perhaps one of your layers doesn't quite fit, as long as your front layer and your base layers match, you can trim into your aperture on the middle layers and it won't matter because you're not gonna see that. You're gonna line this over the top like so and everything's gonna be hidden nicely. We're gonna go ahead and stick 
the first layer down, making sure it's nice and aligned with the aperture to the center. Using finger lift tape, but I'm also gonna come in and use a little bit of our Pin Flare Book Club binding glue around just these elements of the aperture, just so they don't lift. Um, you want everything nice and secure. So finger lift tape first, like so. And then I'm gonna grab my book binding glue, as I say, and just have that coming into these little areas of the aperture, just so nothing lifts. Everything's then gonna stick perfectly when it's aligned. We're gonna make sure that alignment is spot on for the center and then look to the edges and that should be aligned nicely like so. Hold it in place, remove the tape and smooth those edges down all the way around and then come in and just make sure the glue holds to cover the white on the aperture. Make sure we're not got any glue escaping over the edges there as well. Same thing again for this element, the topper element. So just taking the carrier sheet of the finger lift tape, folding it over the edge to create that little tab, gives us something to pull once we've then aligned the aperture perfectly. And same thing again, just going in and making sure we've got enough of the glue just around the edges to make sure everything then sticks nice and aligned around the center of our card as well. Just coming in as we did before, making sure we are aligning the right way around. <laughs> Would help if I lined the aperture properly. And just easing that into place, checking we've got the right alignment on the outside as well. And then removing the carrier sheet for our tape and smoothing that all down into place. Just a nice, quick and easy way of getting a good aperture and all your mats and layers aligned too. So now when we open, you've got that little aperture to the center, you can view through to the inside of the card and you can make a feature of that too. Now we mentioned um, when we were looking sort of at the, um, when we did the little show and tell of these dies, how you've got the different colorways within this as well. So I thought it would be fun to work from uh, the darkest forwards within the idea of lines. So this first colorway is um, available as a download this nice little deep kind of purple color. This is gonna be our base layer, which we're gonna build the rest of the wreath on. The way we've designed it, it hugs into that aperture that we've cut beautifully. So you get a little bit of an edge all the way around and that's gonna create the start of our card. I'm not gonna shape this layer. Normally you'll see me shape each and every single die cut that we do. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, I want this one to sit flat. This is gonna be our background, if you like, for the design. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of uh, bookbinding glue to each one of the leaves just to hold these in place as we go around. Looking to the alignment of the design and then just making sure each one of those leaves sits evenly with its little surround cut from the aperture like so. All the way around just as is. So if you wanted something that was quite a lightweight card finish, this would be enough, you know, to add uh, perhaps a little butterfly, perhaps a little bird and a little sentiment. But if you want to build into your design, it's fun to come in and start layering up. So a couple of ways of doing that, you can either go straight over the top with another one, or you can come in and snip and layer as well. So I think we're going to have a play around. What's fun about this is then allowing those little leaves to fall over the inside of the aperture as well. So you kind of got a mix and match of the design. But I think let's go ahead and snip. So again, you don't need to be too precious about this. We can always hide any of those little ends and things just by rounding them off and snipping into them. But this gives you, again, a totally different look to your ivy itself. Anywhere where we snipped, let's just go in and round that off. And going to leave that little design open there and come in and overlap. So we're going to extend the look of this wreath. Each time we place a layer down, we're going to just quickly shape the leaves themselves. And because we've added a little bit of shape, we're going to go in with our Pin Flare glue gel, but we're going to make sure we're not going to get any glue gel over any areas which might extend into the aperture itself. So just be mindful of where you're placing your glue for this one. I'm gonna be quite 
free with where we're placing things. I'm not gonna to be too precious about it. Obviously, if you're crafting at home, you can absolutely take as much time as you want to create this, this look and this layering. But for the purpose of demonstration, we're just gonna go ahead and just snip in as needed and layer as we go. Sometimes this is a little bit freeing, just going in and shaping wherever we like. Again, adding that glue gel in and layering around. I've not added glue gel to this one because we don't want it coming over the edge of the aperture there. I'm gonna leave those two for the moment and move on to another. You'll notice as I'm working, I'm working up in color. So I'm starting with the darkest, which is the purple, and then going into the lighter colors as well. Just again, it gives you that sense of perspective. So the deeper colors are in the background, the lighter colors are gonna be in the foreground of this design. Let's look to how we want to extend the wreath itself. It could be that we come around here. We could layer like so. And I think let's just go for it, let's stick. And obviously the more layers you add, the more detailing you add, the more lush and full your wreath is gonna end up looking. Don't worry too much at this stage about any open ends. For example, we can always come in and cover those as and when needed as well. Uh, let's just look to where we want you to come in. I want you to come, I want some, some of them to start sort of expanding into the, the realms of the rest of the car to give you a more full look to your wreath. So let's just go with that. Again, layering up as we go, so that little piece can tuck behind there. And that kind of invites us to add in more here. Um, one thing that I will say, it's, it's lovely to just go in and have a play with these because you've got so many details, so many cut lines to play with, so much green from the ivy itself. And look how we're expanding the size of the wreath. So this little end can tuck in to this leaf here and we can just tuck this other end away too. Again, just checking that we're not coming over the aperture at all. Lifting and essentially creating what is in essence our own die cut from this really in a finish. And then just to this side as well. You know, you notice I'm kind of jumping from one corner, oh, it's a circle, but one side of the circle, if you like, to the other, just to make sure we're maintaining balance. We're not leaving any of the areas out. Doing it this way just means you're getting much more even coverage of the ivy. Uh, just lifting and trailing around that one. Can we hide that little lift? No, let's, that's fine. Let's just round that end off. So just offer them up, see which bits need uh, a little bit of helping hand to be hidden when we're coming in and covering up those little raw ends of the ivy itself. A little bit of glue. This is a lovely way of working because what you're doing is essentially creating your own finish to this piece. You're kind of going off piste and creating your wreath in your own right there as well. Let's go in with a couple more. So again, next layer up for the design, just snipping in. And of course, what you can do is you can always come in and just use um, single leaves as well. You could snip into this completely and have just elements of the leaves rather than using them on the stem. That would be a lovely way of working with them too. Little tuck in. So let's just look to see where we need a little bit more. Um, how would you put it? How would you say it? A little bit more depth to the design. I think we need a little bit more shaping here. So again, shaping each leaf as we go. And just taking the time to build up your wreath look. And then we need to even that up by coming around to the top. And this is, yeah, it's a fun way. It's a fun way of crafting with these things because you're really in control over how the finish is. A little bit more glue, extending that edge over, continuing that sort of feel of it kind of overlapping and being quite open, being quite free. What other colors have we got going on here? Kind of hopping back to a deeper color just to fill in that little area too, which is quite sweet. That works quite well. 
It's quite fun actually, because it doesn't matter how you place them, they often just end up working in this kind of circular motion. As long as you're tucking the ends in, or you're mindful of any areas that need just that extra little bit of coverage, perhaps we want to come in with just a single leaf, for example, we can absolutely do that. And just have a little bit of fun building all your layers like so. So instantly that little open patch has disappeared and you've got that continuation of the wreath. We need a little bit more around this side. Um, we don't want to go too long. Let's just snip in and see, that works quite nicely. And of course you can lift the previous layers that you've done. You can have the leaves entwined, you can have them overlapping one another. It really is your choice on how you craft with this. Let's just tuck that end in there and a little bit round this side as well. I think let's go deeper colour. Kind of switching between the designs there just to find the right one that fits in nicely. Oops. And it's quite a mindful process. I mean, if you're at home, you can spend a long time if you want to just coming in, adding your layers, building up that wreath, building up that whole look to your design as well. And let's have some more twisting in and around. And actually that whole stretch of leaf works quite well. And then I'll use the last wreath just to go in and embellish uh, in individual leaves there too. So I'm looking for placement. And let's just grab that last one. So these lighter leaves, I'm gonna come in and just trim away, perhaps on longer stalks, shape. So we need to kind of finish that little end, cover that little end up with a little leaf. Perhaps that's coming in, tucked behind. Just pull that round and tuck that in. Make sure we're not overlapping this. So that's gonna need another little leaf to disguise that area. Again, as I say, it's a nice way of working. What you want, could do if you want to do, you could draw some of that, that colour in. But these, these lighter colour leaves are going to be in the foreground. They're going to be where the sun is catching the most light from them as well. Just rounding the leaf. So we need a little bit of a light one there. And then I think we can look to start embellishing with a few florals as well. Wreath building is such a mindful process. It, you know, it can take as long as it takes, or you can make it a shorter process by creating smaller wreaths, for example. Those little florals from the floral vines are going to work so tirelessly within your wreath design. Again, snip into them if you want to. These are going to add colour to your wreath. Look how that then pops. Just popping that in and adding that detail. Coming in for that one we snipped away rounding that off and snipping that in as well just moving around the wreath to make sure you've got lots of detailing all the way around and elements of color all the way around as well i'm going to place one down here we can then move on to the top let's have you you're quite a nice long piece and look for somewhere where it needs a little bit of embellishment perhaps this time we're going to go in with our brick binding glue and again, you're filling those spaces just with a little bit of colour. You don't have to go crazy with this element. You don't have to go lots and lots and lots of florals. Again, because you've got them all individually, it really lends itself well to decorating the wreath as you choose it to be as well. A little bit of colour there. Again, just slipping the ends of the flowers between the leaves there. So it looks like the whole thing has been made as is rather than put together like we're doing. It's very intentional, which I love about these kind of designs. Pop you in there. Ah, let's just look for little, little flowers and things, little sweet detailings, little embellishments to add color to your wreath. Of course, we have got the other colorways for these as well, if you wanted to change it up a little bit and include little pops of color as well. But having these sort of yellows against the greens and that backdrop of the purple just really makes the colours pop. I think it's a fun way of introducing a different look to your card designs. Perhaps you can sit along there. 
lips. Hold your little bit longer so you stick. A uh, couple more and I think we're good to start adding our little birds and things, our little characters. Just looking to it, any spaces along the vine that we need to fill. Something in there perhaps. And then one little last flower. So almost keeping like a little halo, a little central point to these flowers all the way round to add in detailing. That little space there is crying out for some flowers. And now let's look to our beautiful little characters. So telling our story, our little birds perhaps found the, the best spot to nest on the front of this card. Here she is. Let's pop her onto our wreath using a little bit of glue gel, again shaping her out. And she's just going to sit nestled within the design to give her a little bit more prominence so she's not lost in the overall look. Layer her up twice. And then what we can always do is add in a decoupage layer as well. Just follow the cut line details that have already been laid down. Come around her little wing. So now that that's in the foreground, again, give it a little bit of shape. That's so sweet. There she is sort of nestled in, ready to make a nest in the design. I think just a few little butterflies to finish. I think in that same color palette with the, um, the same as the birds that we've got going on. So a little butterfly with these closed wings. And let's just go for some open wing butterflies as well. Excuse me, whilst I find them, there they are. Little greens and the soft colours of the butterflies here. And the pinks. And as we mentioned, you have got the smaller sizes as well to bring in that sense of perspective, which is quite a fun way to play around. So let's grab a couple of those just to embellish our wreath further. And um, butterflies, it's always nice to just lift the wings up and have the glue just to the center of the body. The rest of the butterfly is then free. And we can have those kind of coming in. Perhaps they've seen the flowers on the wreath there and they want to have a little closer inspection. Just nestled in. Perhaps one has landed with his wings closed on the wreath itself. Again, finding a nice balance with the bird there as well. And the smaller butterflies, I'm going to use my tweezers just to embellish around, giving kind of sense of perspective. You kind of got this idea that the butterflies are all coming in and fluttering around this little ivy wreath there. I need a few more smaller ones just to make everything make a little bit more sense of the flow. Little one just over here, just in that little nook we've got going on in the wreath itself and I feel like we need just one more if I can find one without too much trouble. My butterflies are all fluttered off by the looks of it. <laughs> Where have you gone butterflies? All right we'll use one of you bigger ones then I think. Oh no here we go. I did get them out. Can't see for looking sometimes. This happens when you get all excited and you've got lots and lots of die cuts out ready to play with just like so to finish. Little butterflies and a wreath of course around that lovely aperture so as soon as you open the card it really comes to life with the ability to see through that centre just like so. Isn't that sweet the little bird nestled in there as well. Lovely way of building as they keep snipping in layering up that wreath over and over to make that die cut work how you want it to work just like so. Thank you for joining me today on today's demonstration featuring the Never I Ending Ivy collection. More details and to purchase can be found in the comments in the description of this video. Just click on the links and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to find more tutorials from Highlight Crafts as well. Thank you very much. Bye bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.